Okay, today we're continuing with our uh, discussion and meeting management of different types of motions, how those are used, how those motions relate to one another. Uh, but before we really get into that, I'm going to say a special hello to one of our channel surfers out there. Uh, the other day, this strange lady walked up to me and introduced herself, and it seems that she's a night owl. Hello, Vernell Moore, wherever you are. Hope you're watching. Uh, she's a grandmother, she's retired, and she likes to be up late at night, and so she's watching this class just for the fun of it, and says she enjoys having us come into her living room. So we say hello to you and hope that uh, you're entertained and informed by what's going on here. There's one little item I want to backtrack on. When we put a visual up a while back, I left off one item. and. Uh, some of you caught this in the review for the class, some of you didn't. When we identified the types of motions, we've been talking about privileged motions, but I realized the other day that that wasn't actually on uh, this list. So let's take a look at this for just a minute and recognize that we have main motions or resolutions, we have restoratory motions, and we've talked about these the, on our colored blocks. The restoratory motions are uh, the ones that are colored red. And those restoratory motions have the same status as the main motion or a resolution. And number one and number four, all of those can have the subsidiary motions applied to them. And we'll be doing some more of that today as we look at what applies under which circumstances what you would use when in order to accomplish your goals. We talked about incidental motions. Those are the ones that we have color-coded in green. Uh, pop up uh, as they're needed at any particular time that they're applicable, and we take care of those immediately, particularly something like a point of order, a point of information. Uh, there's some other incidental motions that, uh, like opening and closing nominations or opening the polls, closing the polls that are used in more isolated circumstances. And then the privileged motions are those, well, let me ask you, which ones are privileged? How many are privileged? There's a limited number of privileged motions. Do you remember? Five privileged motions. Right, there are five privileged motions. What are they? Fix you, time to adjourn. Okay, fix the time to adjourn. Uh, adjourn. Adjourn. Recess. Recess. Question of privilege. Question of privilege. Call for uh, orders of the day. Okay, and call for orders of the day. And those fit where in the ranking motions? They have low rank, middle rank, high rank. Yeah. They're uh, at the top. Okay, and that's why we call them privileged. They're the five highest ranking motions, and those five privileged motions take priority over the seven subsidiary motions. The seven subsidiary motions apply to whatever main motion is on the floor. So you have 13 motions that must stay in order. Okay, good. Get that little piece of housekeeping taken care of there. Okay, um, think for a minute. What motion would you use if you felt like you needed a break in the meeting? You've been sitting here for hours, and you've been sitting here for 10 minutes. You know, this is long enough. We want a break in the meeting. What would you do? Okay. Motion to recess. Okay. And how would you phrase that? Would you say, I motion to recess? Move that we recess for a certain amount of time. Okay. I move that, Madam Chairman, you get recognized and all that. I move that we recess for 5 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever you want. Okay. Then what happens? Do, we, do I say we're taking a 10-minute recess and wrap the gavel? Yes. You vote on it? Is that correct? Right. Okay, it needs to be put to a vote, and what kind of a vote does it take? Unanimous, two-thirds, majority? Majority, good guess. Or you knew. Yeah. Okay, we got other people up here thumbing through their books to make sure they have a safe answer. And that's okay. That's what you do when you don't know the answer. You have your book with you and you check, unless it's exam time, of course. Okay, uh, you want to get some new business before the assembly. How are you going to do that? Yeah. 
I mean, big science has students thinking. <laughs> when, when you want to get some business before the assembly, what do you do? Okay. Yes, call for the orders of the day. Is there no? no well, okay, what are the orders of the day? Help him out here. He went out on a limb. Don't let him saw it off. Okay. And then like the agenda of, of what you were going to talk about that meeting? Yeah, the orders of the day or your agenda for that day. You take the order of business and then you plug in all the specifics. You remember order of business, you just had that on an exam. Okay, and under standing committee reports, you list all those committees. Under unfinished business, you list any items of business that weren't finished. Under new business, you list the items to be discussed. Okay, and what would the mayor tell you you need to have ready to go when you get to that new business? Here we are with an agenda with 30 items on it. Agenda item number one. Then what? It was a long weekend. Okay, remember he said, and this is not true of most meetings, uh, but uh, Mayor Watson said that he would prefer to know before the meeting ever started who's going to make that main motion and who's going to second it. He'd like to know which way the vote's going to. And if you only have five people, your odds of uh, taking care of that are much better. But here we have the agenda items. Can the chair, can the presiding officer make the motion? They're not supposed to. And the chair certainly can't say, uh, the chair moves that we paint the walls purple. That's out of order. Sometimes what you have happening is the assumption of a motion. If it comes out of the executive committee, if you know it's an, if it comes from national to a, a local group, if there are items that must be voted on and addressed. Uh, some, I've seen an executive secretary do this a few times, a group where there are matters that, where the executive secretary needed direction on what to do <clears throat> and had the floor at the time of uh, his report and would say, and anyway, the language that sometimes gets used is the chair will assume a motion for thus and so. That's not really right, and if anybody objected to it, then it would, you know, by two-thirds you could throw that out. But if you've got a kind of laid-back group that doesn't want to talk, uh, you may, you know, you're kind of getting general consent for this. And general consent, we've talked a little bit about general consent, <clears throat> but general consent is what kind of puts you midway between formal parliamentary procedure and an informal committee meeting. You remember one of our uh, principles early on was that the larger the group gets, the more likely you are to need formal procedures. And if you've got a real comfortable group, a real laid back kind of group, if the leader knows the sense of the thinking of the group for whatever reason, uh, then you can use general consent much more than you can when uh, you've got very controversial issues. But anyway, ideally you would know uh, who is going to uh, make those motions when you get to them, when you get to those specific items of business. And if you as the chair don't particularly care whether they're voted on or not, then you certainly would not assume a motion. You know, you would say uh, there's a question of whether or not to to have a holiday social. You know, agenda item number four involves having a holiday social. The chair is open for a motion pertinent to this topic. And you wait, and if nobody says anything, oh. you, know, you might ask again out of courtesy, is, does anyone want to make a motion? Do we have a maker of a motion? Uh, for something pertinent to the holiday social. If nothing happens, then 
you can move on to agenda item number five. You know, maybe they don't know what they want, whatever. But normally, somebody will, will move that. Okay. Um, if you thought that people were talking too much, what would you do? You've got two or three long-winded people that go on and on and on and nobody else is saying anything. What could you do? And there are a couple of right answers here. Michael. Maybe go to previous question. Okay, if you're ready to vote, then you would say, I've moved the previous question. That needs a second. What kind of vote? Two-thirds. Two-thirds, right. Why? Because it cuts off, yeah. The rights of the minority. Right, it cuts heard. off the right of the minority to be heard. So it's going to take a two-thirds vote. Okay, maybe you would like to hear, so that's one good answer. Uh, maybe you would like to hear from some other people. Maybe you would like to curtail the big mouths. What other choices have you got here? Okay. Limit or extend the... Uh, time for debate. Okay, do you want to extend the time for debate? No, not if you want to. Uh, okay, if you're tired of these few, okay, what kind of wording could you use if you want to limit debate so these few can't talk so much? Okay, I, I move to uh, limit debate mm -hmm. on this matter to five minutes or something like that. Or? Right. Exactly right. I move to limit debate to five minutes. Uh, it needs a little more to it. It either needs to say to five minutes per speaker or to five minutes total so we know which way you're going with this. And either way will work. I move that we limit the discussion of this matter to a maximum of ten minutes. Or I move that uh, the time limit per speaker be limited to two minutes or three minutes. Then what? It needs a second. Is it open to discussion? Is it debatable? No. Okay, it's not debatable. Is there anything you can do to that motion other than vote on it? Is it amendable? Stephanie's shaking her head, yes. yes it's amendable. Okay, yes, it's amendable. Okay, you'd have to be pretty prompt because if it's not debatable, then the chair is going to say it's been moved and seconded to limit debate to two minutes per speaker. And while I'm taking the breath to say all in favor, then someone would have to be recognized in order to state the amendment. Okay, is the amendment debatable? Yes. Okay, yes. the amendment is debatable, but only in a very restricted sense. How is it restricted? You can only talk about the length of time. You can't talk about whether or not you should be limiting debate. You can't talk about the main motion. But you could say something like, uh, two minutes is not enough time. Uh, I think people should have at least five minutes. Or you know something very brief that is germane only to the amendment. Could you have another amendment? strike out two insert three okay Sharon says yes could you have another amendment to strike out three and insert seven I'm leading you down the <laughs> you evil could, path you could have an amend amendment to an amendment okay let's see here let me write this down then we'll look at it. we've got a motion to limit debate what was the first one to five minutes? 
Okay, and then we had a primary amendment to limit it to two. And then we had a secondary amendment to make it three. And the question is, can we have another amendment to make it seven? What do you think? One yeah. answer for sure. Hmm, why not? That's a good question. And we wouldn't be pausing here if those were right answers, would we? <laughs> okay, the third level amendment is not in order. Robert says that you can only have two amendments pending at any time, a primary amendment and a secondary amendment. At any time on anything. Mm -hmm. Now, let's make up another little scenario here. Um, you could have a main motion. Well, let's see if we can do it this way. We've got a main motion. Give me a main motion. That's worth amending. Okay. Madam Chairman, I move that we uh, shorten the final exam. <laughs> okay, the main motion is to shorten the final exam. Let me get rid of this piece of paper. Is there a second to that motion? I second that motion. His brother seconds it, folks. <laughs> okay, it's been moved and seconded to shorten the final exam. Is there discussion? Okay, we won't bog down discussion right now. Uh, can you amend that motion? Now, the maker of the motion probably wouldn't amend it because he would have stated his main motion as he wanted it in the first place. Okay, but how could you, somebody else help out here, how could you amend that main motion? Could you amend it by getting uh, more specific and how you wanted to do this? Yeah, because yeah. right now I don't know what shorten means. Does it mean cut it in half? I can't remember how many questions you have either. Uh, but you could strike the word shorten and put in something else. Would it be yeah, easier to get a motion that's a little more concrete? Or would you like to amend this one in some way? We could go ahead and amend this one. Okay. And, uh, strike, shorten. Okay. To, uh, Primary? Happen. I'm sorry, what? The, uh, the, uh, um, the wordage of the final exam. Striking half, or striking short. Yeah. Okay, to strike out shorten. And uh, half and the final exam. Trying to become more specific. To cut the final I mean, exam in half? Right. Is that what you're saying? Right. Okay, so the, the primary amendment is to cut in half the final exam to cut it by half. Okay, if you're going to make a secondary amendment, what could it say? Okay. The exam would only contain the first four questions. Okay, there's something wrong with that. Okay. Um, well, I don't know whether it's wrong yet or not. Tell me how exactly you would change the wording. If we adopted the primary amendment to strike out shorten and insert cut in half, then the motion, if adopted, would read, it's been moved and seconded to cut in half the final exam. So what words would you... Actually, the only thing that's on the floor that's immediately pending right now is cut in half. 
Are you all following that? How about it? Okay, second? this is sloppy. Uh, let me take it off of the top up here. Okay, the main motion was move to shorten the final exam. The primary amendment was strike out shorten and insert. So it's a motion to strike and insert. Okay, the only thing pending right now is cut in half. So you may strike or add. You can you can alter the primary amendment. Okay, Michael. Would it move to strike, cut in half, and insert, uh, cut in a fourth? Okay. Maybe further shorten it. Okay, you could say delete half and insert one fourth. Okay, now to, to get to just do the first four questions, you would need a different motion and a different, you'd have to get these things off the floor. Okay, so in that case we might vote uh, you know, on this one and if it failed, vote on that one and if it failed then we'd be back up to shorten the final exam. Uh, it would then be amendable and that time you might say by doing only questions one through four. But now there's another motion called, uh, another form of amendment called create a blank. And sometimes when you have uh, lots of choices, then uh, that's the motion that you can go to because Let's, let's shift topics for a minute and it may be a little bit easier and I won't have to write quite as much sloppy stuff up there. If we had a, a main motion on the floor that said, maybe we're picking our next convention site, and it said, I move that our next convention uh, be held in San Francisco. And someone moved to strike San Francisco and insert Los Angeles. Somebody else, secondary amendment, moved to strike Los Angeles and insert Dallas. Okay, we're now at the secondary amendment level. No more amendments are in order. What sometimes happens is that uh, people vote against, the, you can't get a majority, well, you're having trouble getting, well, you haven't gotten a majority for anything. So Dallas didn't get a majority, that went to the wayside. Los Angeles didn't get a majority, it fell out. San Francisco didn't get a majority, that fell out. And so instead of going through this primary, secondary process all the way through, uh, someone says, I move to create a blank. And sometimes it's done in the original motion. Uh, you don't care, or you know you care, uh, you don't know what the group wants, what the sense of the, of the meeting is. So the main motion says, uh, I move that we hold our 1996 annual convention in blank. And then the chair, the presiding officer, says, how shall the blank be filled? And we take nominations, just like you would nominate people for the office of treasurer or something. How shall the blank be filled? And then you can have as many options as you want. Los Angeles, San Francisco, Scottsdale, New York City, Washington, D.C., Miami, Florida. You know, you just list all those places that anybody is interested in, just like nominating a person uh, for office. And you take that list, and in the case of, well, I'll come back to that in a minute. Anyway, you're going to vote on that list until one of them gets a majority. Now when you're doing it in the list like that, it's important that you vote against what you don't want. Because the first one that gets a majority fills the blank. So if we have uh, 25 people here and five of them vote for Dallas and two vote against Dallas, and the rest of the people are silent, Dallas just got a majority vote. 
And, and that's one of those situations where you'd probably have someone move to reconsider immediately because it didn't dawn on people what they were doing and that they should have been voting and so forth. Uh, but each time a name comes up of a site, you either vote for it or against it. And we go all the way down the list until one of them gets a majority. Now you try to arrange the topics logically. And Robert says uh, if you're dealing with distance, you usually start with the place farthest away and work your way back to the closest. But that may or may not be the most logical when it comes to a convention site. Uh, I think the, the logic inherent in Robert is that people want to go someplace close rather than far away. Uh, but for many of us, that's not the case. You know, the farther away, the more fun it is, uh, up to a point at least. Uh, certainly, if you're dealing with money, you want to arrange it. Uh, if you're selling something, then you probably want to start with the lowest sum of money that you're willing to spend. And if you're buying with the greatest sum that you're willing to spend. If we want to uh, sell the old computer, sell the club vehicle, whatever, uh, you know, we've got an old truck, we want to sell it. Well, how many people are willing to sell it for $10,000? Well, yeah, we're all willing to do that. You know, and that would get the majority immediately, but it wouldn't really tell you anything. Okay, but if, if you start with the lowest sum, how many of you are willing to sell it for 500? Well, I don't know, you know, it still kind of runs and hauls junk and it's ugly. Uh, I don't, you know, for 500, I, I think we probably ought to keep it if that's all we can get for it and use it as our junk mobile. Well, how many people are willing to sell it for $1,000? All in favor, all opposed. You know, and you may get, depending on what the vehicle is and the condition that it's in. Uh, so see how the logic of that works? You, you want to arrange them as best, you want things in either an ascending or descending order, and you want the least likely item to come up first so that you kind of work your way up to what the real consensus of the group is. Because if you went 5,000 and then 10,000 and then 1,000 and then 3,000, you might or might not get an accurate snapshot of, of what the group is willing to do. So money is a tricky thing. You can fill the blank with single items like money or places. You may fill the blank with a package deal. You know, maybe you've got a group that's trying to decide on uh, meeting sites and you've got a whole bunch of variables in there. You know, you're dealing with horizontal and vertical properties and urban and resort and uh, parking fees and no parking fees and there's just a whole lot of stuff that goes into each package. And so you might say, okay, uh, you know, here's package A, here's package B, here's package C, and here's package D, and I'm running out of fingers, but here's package E. We've got all these different choices. And so we're going to vote on those five different choices. And then, once you've done that, the, whichever one is first to get a majority, then you just stop voting on the rest. Uh, if you've then filled the blank with package C, then the motion before you is I move that the convention be held not only in Seattle, Washington, but at the such and such hotel. You know, you've got the package on the floor as part of the motion. Then that's open to additional refinement. Once we've agreed that out of all the packages, on the whole, this is the one we like the best, then you're in a position to amend a specific part of that and finish cleaning it up. <clears throat> Maybe you like, yeah? What exactly would you word, um, I create a blank motion, what would the wording be in that kind of list format so we would identify that as the audience? 
Okay, you would uh, say, I move that, are we talking about the package here? Right, the package when you're listing either money or places. Like, in other words, we've already considered two motions or two amendments of the main motion and neither have received a majority, so now you're going to go to a create a blank motion. What would the wording be for that motion? Okay, uh, if you were doing it on the front end and you didn't, it would, it would be whatever the, the original motion was if you've gone through that other process. But if you know this is going to be very complicated to start with, then you might say something like, I move that for our 1996 convention, we adopt plan blank. Worded like that, plan mm -hmm. blank, and then it could be plan blank, or that we, uh, I move that for our 1998 convention, we adopt option number, option blank. Because we know that somebody is going to, you know, we're going to have uh, five <clears throat> representatives from convention bureaus come in and make their spiel and talk about what their city can do for us. But that gets it on the floor then <clears throat> for discussion. But whatever it is, whether it's selling the vehicle for a certain price, whether it's uh, adopting a package with a particular hotel, you know, maybe you're reviewing uh, chain options. We talked about how sometimes you sign a five-year contract with one hotel chain. You know, and the motion might say something like, I move that for our next five-year block of conventions, we sign with blank. And then you hear all these different things and get the different choices on the floor. Uh, speech communication faculty did that several years ago, did something similar, several years ago when we were trying to get our teacher certification packages together. And it was, you know, shall they take this course, shall they take that course? Well, I like this one, yeah, but I like that one. And we ended up putting three or four different degree plan designs up on the chalkboard and saying, okay, you know, out of these, which one do you like the most? And we got it narrowed that way and then went back and did some little internal patching on it. But that was the only way that we could get that done. We couldn't go through line by line because there were vested interests, you know, these people thought this coursework ought to be in there and these people thought that coursework uh, should be in there. And none were ready to vote on one part without voting on the other part, without being sure what the other part would be. <clears throat> so anyway, look up, you know, you'll find create a blank under methods of amendment and Robert and just know that it's an option that you have. It's not used very often because a lot of people don't know about it. But it's a way to stop this voting down of secondary and primary amendments when nothing seems like it will pass. Okay, and what you do is conduct an election on your options. Okay, we've got a main motion out here. Uh, We gave it, you want to continue with the final exam issue or you want a new main motion? <clears throat> okay, we've got a main motion that said to shorten the final exam. We had an amendment to cut it in half. And let's see, I'll borrow over here. Uh, here's another amendment to cut it or to strike half and insert one-fourth. Okay, the floor would be open for discussion on the one-fourth. What kinds of things can you, you can comment on that or you can do something else. I move that we uh, opt for, I'm not sure, right, I'm not, I'm not quite sure how to, to, uh, to uh, create a blank again. Okay, create a blank, and I don't think we brought a green. Yeah, the. Okay, the create a blank is an incidental motion, so think green. Okay, think green, but I don't actually have one that says that. We missed one when we put these together. Uh, but the motion to create a blank 
is an incidental motion, and if you create the blank, um, that would that would force them to force the vote on, on half or a fourth. Uh, no, what it will do? Well, let me say. Okay, it's been moved. Is there a second to the motion to create a blank? Second. Been moved and seconded. All in favor of creating a blank, say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Okay, we will create a blank. So now we're set, we've got a main motion pending with a blank in it, which now says. This is worded a little bit awkwardly. Uh, I guess the chair would assume that the motion says that the final exam consists of. We, we would need to kind of rework this so that the language uh, makes sense. So the final exam is that the sense of the assembly that the motion is that the final exam should consist of blank. Okay. Now see, as chair, you can reword things if you understand what the people are trying to do. If you don't understand, then you have to ask the maker of the motion to write it down and clarify it and say, well, you know, I'll recognize you to make that motion as soon as you've got it together and, uh, you know, maybe you get a little help over there from your friends getting it worded. Okay, so we have a blank, then we have a main motion seconded that says the final exam should consist of blank. Okay, then I would say how should the blank be filled and based on the amendments uh, I've heard uh, the final should be half of the questions that have been distributed to the assembly, one-fourth of the questions that have been distributed to the assembly. Are there other suggestions for how the blank should be filled? Multiple choice and one-fourth. One-fourth of the questions plus multiple, multiple choice, choice questions. Uh, the chair is uncertain about the multiple choice because this is a take-home final. I mean, is that your intent? It's take home and their take yes, home multiple take, choice. Take home multiple choice. Okay. <coughs> okay. With one fourth the questions. Okay, one fourth of the essay questions plus uh, multiple choice that would be answered at home <laughs> in your dreams. <laughs> uh, okay, that's option number three. Yes, Stephanie. If I had a question about whether that was one fourth of the exam or questions one through four, how would I clarify that? Ah, what would she use? Good question. What did she just use to ask me that? Crash. Okay, that was a point of information, and that popped up right in the middle of filling those blanks. Okay. Now she asked me a question. How would you get the answer to that question? Same motion, only you direct it through the chair to the maker of the amendment or the suggestion. Point of information, Madam Chairman, does the uh, proposer of the amendment mean and go ahead and ask it to make sure I get it right. One fourth of the exam or questions one through four of the exam? One fourth of the exam. Okay. One fourth of the exam plus multiple choice questions. Okay. Are there other ways, that other proposals for how the blank should be filled? Yes. I would propose that the blank be, or that the the test include four questions of our choice. Four of your? The four questions. Four. Uh, new questions? No, no. Uh, no. One fourth of the exam and those questions to be selected by the students. Okay. How many questions are on there? Okay, so the chair is uncertain what one-fourth of nine is. 
would you like to rephrase your, which probably means on all of these we'd have to go back. Okay, but let's see, your suggestion was the students select one-fourth plus, what did you say? Plus the multiple choice. Well, right now, <laughs> it's your proposal. Okay, we have on the floor one half, one fourth, one fourth plus multiple choice. Students selected one fourth plus multiple choice. Are there other suggestions? motion that one-fourth of finals exam consists of a total of three questions uh, students selected with one bonus question. Say that one more time, please. A total, the exam a total uh, of three questions of the student's choice and one bonus question. Okay, we've got such a far-fetched motion going here that I'm having a little trouble um, dealing with it because we don't have point values assigned to anything. But anyway, for our purposes, okay, now we've got one, two, three, four, five choices here. Okay, so you're going, are there further suggestions? Okay, let's go ahead and run this one to a vote rather than so we can get through this example and, and move to another rather than trying to sort all of this out. Okay, those, remember everybody needs to vote for and against. Whatever you don't like, you vote against. Okay, those in favor of filling the blank with one half of the question, say aye. Those opposed, no. Okay, we've got six people here voting, so that was zero to six, that took care of that one. Okay, with one-fourth of the questions, all in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Okay, unanimous no's. One-fourth of the questions plus multiple choice, all in favor say aye. All opposed say no. Okay. Uh, students selected one-fourth plus multiple choice, all in favor say aye. Any opposed? All opposed say no. no. Okay, that one was two to four and it failed. Okay, and those in favor of three student selected questions plus a bonus question say aye. aye. Those opposed? Okay, I think I heard five to one. Uh, so that carried and the blank would then be filled with three student selected questions plus a bonus question. Except it's not happening. <laughs> Had this been a little more realistic, I might have been persuaded. Okay, um, let's develop as complicated a scenario as we can. Um, give me a main motion that's a little more easily amended. Okay, be brave. I move that we uh, change the school colors to blue instead okay. of red. Okay, well right now they're red and white. Right, okay, so you I just change it to blue and red. Blue and red. Instead of red and white. Okay, it's been moved that the school colors, UH school colors, correct, okay, be changed to blue and white. Is there a second to that motion? Okay, I'll second hers. Now, if it were not seconded, I would say the motion dies for lack of a second. Okay, we got a second, so it's on the floor. Uh, is there a discussion of this main motion? Michael. I move to 
strike uh, blue and insert uh, maroon. Okay, primary amendment to strike blue and insert maroon. Is there a second to that amendment? Second. Okay, it's been seconded. Is there discussion on the amendment? Okay, here we okay, we've got a main motion with one amendment on the floor. I move to strike maroon and insert red. I'm sorry. I Wrong comment. <laughs> 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 I didn't realize that. I'm not going to let you do that one. <laughs> I didn't realize it. Purple. And purple. Okay, so now we have a secondary amendment to strike maroon and insert purple. Okay, do something else to this now. Oh, without amending it anymore. Let's don't go back to create a blank. What else could you do to this? Okay, Mike. I could move to refer to a committee. Okay, do that. Well, I look for the. What Madam language Chair, are you going to use? Um, Madam Chairman, I move to refer this matter to a committee. Which committee? Uh, the color committee. <laughs> eh. Okay, it's been moved to refer this to a committee of, and you're, we don't have a committee, so you're going to have to oh, create okay. one. Um, of how many people selected how? You would create the committee as you make the motion. I would mm -hmm. say if I, we don't have a committee, yeah, it would be I move that we. I move we create a special committee uh, made up of five members. Okay, yeah, I move to, to refer this matter to a committee to be made up of five members. And how do you want them selected? Um, to be selected by vote of the. Uh, to be elected to be by elected, the assembly, elected, okay. Because see, they could be appointed by the chair, they could be volunteers, but okay, we're going to elect them by the assembly. And when should they report back? Uh, report back. No uh, later than? No later than uh, the next month. Be a little more specific. When is next month? Um, do you mean December 1st? Do you mean no later November 1st? No, no later than uh, November the 1st. That's tomorrow. Well, okay, I don't know we're operating real time. Like oh, December okay. December 1st. Okay, December 1st. That's right. It may or may not be, depending on what semester you're watching this class. Okay, so we have a motion. Did I put it up there? Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's. It's been moved to refer this matter to a committee of five members elected by the assembly to report back no later than December 1st. Is there a second to this motion? I heard a second over here somewhere. <laughs> okay, it's been moved and seconded. Discussion is open. Okay, do something else now that's in order. I move that we postpone this matter indefinitely. Okay, is that in order? I believe so. Pretty wrong. Well. It's not in order. Okay, I was looking for my little uh, amendment tags, but I don't see them. Okay, so we had, now if, if somebody really on your toes, see when he moved to postpone indefinitely, where did that go? Got just enough of these to stay confused. Okay, he moved to postpone it indefinitely, and if I'd said, is there a second to the motion to postpone indefinitely, somebody should have said, point of order. The motion to postpone indefinitely is not in order at this time. Not the speaker is out of order, but the motion's out of order. And I would say your point is well taken, and we just haul that right off the top of there and remove it. Okay, what else can we do to complicate this matter? I move that we lay it on the table, lay this matter on the table. Okay, uh, it's been moved to lay this on the table. Is there a second? Oh, there is a second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to table the motion. All those in favor of tabling the motion, say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Uh, 
Uh, the nays have it. Now, that's not what you say. What do you say? I did that wrong on purpose. What do you say? That's not your best choice. State your point. Oh, I'm sure I counted correctly. Try another incidental motion. Okay, I call for is the better language. Okay, I call for a division of the assembly. Okay, see how these incidental motions just pop up wherever they, they're needed? Okay, a division of the assembly has been called for. All those in favor of tabling the motion, raise your hand, please. Three. All those in, opposed to tabling the motion, raise your hand. Three. The motion fails for lack of a majority. So we got the point of order taken care of, and it did not get tabled. Okay. Discussion is open on the motion to refer to committee. I move that we recess for 15 minutes. It's been moved to recess for 15 minutes. Is there a second? Oh, where'd point of order go? Okay, state your point of order. I can't find it right now. I don't believe we can move to recess with a motion to refer to committee on the... There it is. Uh, I may be completely wrong, but... <laughs> okay, the point of order that's been raised, and I'll be a really dumb presiding officer and ask all of you as my parliamentarians, uh, is the motion to reset... Is that where we are? Reset? Yeah. Is the motion to recess in order right now with the motion? Given what's on the floor, is the motion to recess in order? No, it is not. Tell me why. Because I just read it. <laughs> Um, are, are you telling me recess is or is not in I'm order? I'm telling you uh, I don't believe recess is in order. Okay, tell me why. What, what did you read that made you think it was not in order? It is not in order when another one has the floor. What are you looking at? Uh, okay, you're on the tented pages. What page are you on? Page 24. Of the tented of the, pages? Right, right. Number... Yeah, give me the number. Uh, just Seventy. Seventy. Okay, what are you looking at? In order when another has the floor? Yes. Okay, that column refers to whether or not you can make the motion if of whether or not it can interrupt. That column on your tented pages doesn't, isn't identifying where the motion is in the rank. It's identifying whether or not you can move to recess while Sharon is talking. You know, if, if she's in the middle of a five-minute discourse on whether or not to refer this to committee, you could yell point of order and interrupt her if you had a point of order. Uh, if you look at number 59, in order when another has the floor, another refers to another person and whether or not you can interrupt that person. Okay, if you go back to tented page number four, that will give you your list of priority motions, of ranking motions. Okay, look at page number four, and then tell me whether recess is in order or not. Yes, it is in order. Okay, good, and that's where you go to get those uh, 13 ranking motions. And then they have all those wonderful confusing brackets out there to try to help you keep track of whether they're debatable or uh, not. Okay, so we settled our point of order. And that comes off the floor. And we have the motion to recess on the floor. You motioned, I mean you seconded recess. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to recess for 15 minutes. Is that debatable? Nope. Is it amendable? 
Yep, it's amendable. Okay, all in favor of recessing for 15 minutes? Say aye. Aye. All opposed, no? No. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, the ayes have it, and if we were in a real meeting, would recess for 15 minutes. <laughs> no, the, well, the meeting can recess if you wanted to. The class can't recess. Oh. Okay, we'll assume our 15 minutes is up. And I'm calling you back to order. The recess has ended, and we're back in. Okay, the, where are we? We come back into the meeting, and what do I say first? Yeah, I mean, okay, this, this assembly is called back to order, whack, whack, whack with my gavel. Hopefully one whack, you're not supposed to pound your gavel. Like some people in some public forums we know of. Okay, and normally you would alert the assembly, you know, over the microphone, you would say, uh, we have three minutes of the recess left, please encourage people to come back into the assembly hall. Uh, I'm about to reconvene the meeting. Please take your seats. And hopefully they're getting in and kind of settled. But sometimes you do have to remind them, okay, this meeting uh, is called back to order. Delegates, please take your seats and come to order. This assembly must come to order now. We are, recon you know, sometimes you have to get a little assertive, assertive and repeat yourself. Okay, but as soon as I've got the place quiet and we're back in order, what do I say? Do I call for committee reports? What do I do? Say more. Hold the mic down. I'm not even sure what you're saying. Okay. Oh, okay. The comments you never heard were just withdrawn. Okay, what am I going to say first? Am I going to call for treasurer's report? Am I going to go to committee reports? I think we would continue with unfinished business. Good answer. You continue right where you left off at the recess. And that's the difference between a recess and an adjourn, adjourning and starting a new meeting. You don't go all the way back to the beginning of the agenda. You just pick up where you left off when you left for the recess. So I would say... As you may recall, uh, when we recessed the motion on the floor, which is still on the floor, was the motion to refer this matter to a committee of five members elected by the assembly to report back by December 1st. Is there further discussion on the amendment? It was an am no, it's just refer. There is no amendment. Is there further discussion on this motion? I would like to, to amend the uh committee time to one day for decision. The, okay. I, I move to refer or move to limit the committee limit the committee to one day. Okay, then the chair would interpret that uh, as an amendment right. to strike no later than December first and insert tomorrow. So is that correct? Is it, that what you want correct. to is that how it have to that's how it have to word it if yeah, I the, when you make an amendment you need to phrase it the best way to do it. Now, I mean, you made yourself clear, and, and that's the most important part. But if you can phrase it in terms of striking this part out and inserting that part, or by adding these words, you know, we've got, the, if, before we go to this one, to report back no later than December 1st, you, what are some words you could add to that? I, you know, if you wanted to amend it by adding something. <clears throat> Anything come to mind? Okay, you might say to report uh, or to insert provide a written, to provide a written report no later than December 1st. But you would, you would do that, I have to write it down before I forget what I said, uh, if you can phrase it so that you insert the exact words so that the secretary gets those exactly right in the minutes. Because if you say, I'd like to amend it uh, so that the committee comes up with some sort of written documentation that they turn into the assembly, 
Well, okay, maybe we agree with that, but it messes up the wording of the motion. You could tack all of that onto the end to report no later than December 1st and to provide some sort of written documentation, whatever all I just said. But that's wordy and unnecessary. Okay? But nobody made that one. Okay, the motion, that, the amendment that was proposed was to strike no later than December 1st and insert tomorrow. Is there a second to that amendment? Okay, hearing no second, the amendment, the, the amendment dies for lack of a second. Okay, is there further discussion of the motion on the floor? Well, Chairman, I, I move to uh, amend or, <coughs> and to strike December 1st, is it? Mm -hmm. And insert uh, next fall. Okay, the amendment is to strike December 1st and insert next fall. Is that what you fall want? Fall of 96. Fall of 96. It's your amendment, you know, and sometimes you don't really care when a committee reports. I mean, you know, get back to us by the first of the year. Okay, give or take several weeks. Other times you you, usually, the sooner you need something, the more specific you are about it. And if we've got several months or, you know, we don't have to deal with this until next summer or the following fall or whatever. It's your motion, your committee, so forth. Okay, so the amendment is to strike December 1st and insert fall of 96. Is there further, is there, was there a second to that? A second. Okay. That was moved and seconded, so it's open for discussion. Any discussion of the amendment only? Okay, hearing none, all in favor of adopting the amendment to strike December 1st and insert fall of 96, say aye. aye. Okay, you can raise your hands if you want to. Uh, those opposed? Okay, the ayes have it and the motion is adopted. The amendment is adopted. The motion now on the floor is to refer to a committee of five members elected by the assembly to report no later than the fall of 1996. The floor is open for discussion on that motion. Hearing none, the chair will put the question to a vote. All in favor of the motion to refer to committee say aye. <coughs> All opposed, no. No. Okay, the ayes have it, and the motion is adopted, and we will create a committee of five people uh, to handle this matter. Now, that means <clears throat> that the whole matter goes to committee, amendments and all. Okay? <clears throat> now, <clears throat> excuse me, we need a committee. And the committee is to be elected by the assembly. Let's see, I see a closed nominations over here. Uh, we could actually we could have a motion to open nominations, or we could just uh, you know normally what would happen is the chair would say, okay, we need a committee for this matter. Uh, the floor is now open for nominations. You all know each other's names well enough to know. We've got Sharon and Stephanie and Nicole and Waleed and Rod and Michael. <clears throat> we got all these home viewers too. Just, anyway, just give me some names. I nominate myself. Okay. Rod. Okay. Got it right today. Okay. Rod nominates himself. And you can make up some names of people who aren't here if you want to. I nominate Bill. Okay. Bill's been nominated. Are there other nominees? Bubba. Bubba. <laughs> nominate Mary. Mary. I nominate Joe Schmell. Okay. Joe Schmell. Would you spell that last name, please? <laughs> Is that S-C-H-M-E-L-L? -L? Okay, for the record. 
Okay, are there further nominees? Okay, uh, the wrong word. Please state your point of information. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure how many uh, people we have on the committee so far. Oh, okay, there, at this point there are five nominees. Rod, Bill, Bubba, Mary, and Joe Schmel. Are there further nominees? Okay, you're going to make this easy, huh? Okay, uh, hearing no further nominations, is, is there a motion to close nominations? Let's see, we got that one off. Move to close nominations. Okay. It's been moved to close nominations. Is there a second? Second motion. Second. Moved and seconded to close nominations. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. And <laughs> you voted twice. <laughs> Sometimes you can get away with that if the group's big enough. Okay. Um, the ayes have it and the motion is adopted. Stephanie. Request for approval of Madam Chairman. Uh, please state your request. I move that we have someone close the curtains. There's a glare in here. Okay, let's get this one up. Look at Okay, there's a request or a question of privilege. Uh, that the curtains be closed because of the glare. Uh, the chair is going to deny that request because the spectators on the other side can't see in if we close the curtains. Are you going to do anything about that? Oh wait, okay, I won't give you my reason yet. The, the chair doesn't think that's necessary. I'll, I don't think we'll close the curtains right now. But thank you I would like asking. to uh, appeal that decision. Okay, good. Now you all are on a roll. Okay, now we've got an appeal sitting here. Okay, the chair's reason for denying the request to close the curtains is that there are people uh, passing through the lobby out here who look in and they may want to see what's going on in our meeting. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think we were supposed to have a second. Whoops, somebody should call point of order there. Point okay. of order. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Your point's well taken, Waleed, that the motion needed a second. Okay, so now it's been seconded, and I've given you my reason. Okay, who's going to speak against the decision of the chair? I move to recess until the glare. <laughs> <laughs> um, There's a motion to recess for how long? Until the glare is uh, the no sunset. longer there. Until the, until the sun sets. The sun sets. <laughs> is there a second to the motion to recess? It's been moved and seconded to recess until the sun sets. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Nay. Well, we'll call it the nays have it and the motion is defeated. What do you need now? Um. I move to divide the assembly. Yeah, I call for, I call for, a, division I call of for a division of the assembly. Okay, all of those in favor of recessing until the sun sets, say, uh, uh, raise your hand. One hand, please. Okay, four, those opposed, two. Okay, we had a division of the assembly, and by a motion, by a vote of four to two, the motion to recess was adopted. Okay. Uh, now, if we actually recessed until the sunset, then uh, when we came back, this, is this the appeal? This would be irrelevant. And at that point, uh, I, well, I would say something like, we, have, uh, we still have an appeal. We're reconvened. The sun has set. Uh, we have an appeal pending before the assembly. Does anyone wish to address the appeal? And probably at that point, the maker of the appeal would withdraw it rather Can you than. Appeal? No, I don't think so. I can't, I can't think of any way offhand. No, on page 11 of the tented pages. Okay, so probably uh, the case would be that this one would just be uh, withdrawn 
as not being germane anymore. But it could be, and the, and the way this one's set up, it could be left open to discussion so that we would know tomorrow what we want to, if we're coming, if this is a convention and we're coming back again, so that we would resolve it for future reference. So it could go either way, but probably it's irrelevant at this point. Okay, are we back to refer to committee? Closed nomination. Okay, oh, all right, that one went there. Closed on. Did we ever get them closed? I think. Question of privilege came up. No, okay, but I, re I announced the result of the vote and then you did your question of privilege, right? Okay, so that one's off the floor. Okay, we have five people nominated for the committee to do something. Oh, to investigate the, the changing of the school colors. We close nominations. Okay, uh, you are voting on these five people, and since there are only five, we will, uh, if there's no objection, we'll vote on them as a group. Now, if there was someone that you absolutely hated, what, what would you do? What could you do? If you didn't want them voted on as a group? Consider the uh, Not yet. No. Okay, here's the one you would use. We're getting a little short on time. You would call for a division of the question. And in this case, I would probably say, uh, I would put it to a vote because it's not obvious that the question needs to be divided. So I would say, all in favor of dividing the question so that you vote on the members of the committee individually, say aye, all opposed, no, and we would decide that way which way it should go. Okay, but usually uh, when you've got five nominees for five positions, then you go ahead and take them as a group, and usually you're grateful when anyone wants to do the committee work. So, okay, the motion before you then is to refer to, oh, is we've closed nominations. We're now voting on the five people that will constitute the committee. So all in favor of electing Rod, Bill, Bubba, Mary, and Joe Schmell uh, to membership on the committee, say aye. aye. All opposed, no. Okay, the ayes have it. I think it was either two or three to one in this case. But anyway, the, the majority prevails, and you have elected the committee. So I will ask the secretary to... Uh, advise the members who are not here, Bubba and Joe Schmel and Mary and Bill, uh, that they have been, like normally you would also get the willingness of the people to serve and that sort of thing too. But because we're playing games, we'll be flexible uh, here. But anyway, the uh, committee then is constituted of these five people. I'll ask that the uh, uh, Oh, let's see, I'll ask Rod to convene the first meeting to act as the chairman pro tem, convene the first meeting, and then the committee can elect its own chair uh, from then on and uh, report back to us as soon as you have something to report, and certainly no later than the fall of 1996. Okay, so the whole thing just left the floor and went to committee. Okay. Point, I couldn't object to the consideration of changing the school colors. Right. Couldn't. Right. Yeah, if you wanted to object, we're getting short on time, you had to do that back when the main motion was made. Because once debate starts on the main motion, object to consideration is out of order. Okay, come next time with some more little simple motions like this. Probably the best way to learn to do these is to stack them up and unstack them. Okay?